This will blow your mind. You can turn your photos from this to this in just a few clicks. And I didn't realize how sharp a photo or how clean a photo could really be. This was achieved by using a combination of Topaz Labs software. And in this video review today, I'm gonna to be going through what or who is Topaz Labs, three examples of when I've used Topaz Labs in the past and showing you how to use it in the best workflow possible. And finally, the pros and cons of what I've seen from Topaz Labs and whether I would recommend it to another photographer out there. So Topaz Labs are a company who sell and provide software to photographers, which is based all around artificial intelligence. They do sell a variety of software such as Topaz Studio and Topaz JPEG to RAW. But for this video specifically, we're going to be looking at the image quality bundle, which consists of Denoise, Sharpen and Gigapixel. The first two of them three are pretty self-explanatory, but Gigapixel actually allows you to enlarge your photo by six times or 600%. So then it raises the question of, does it really matter if you shoot on a lower megapixel sensor? And I'm gonna be doing a video on that very soon, so hit the subscribe button if you want to see that. These three pieces of software or the bundle can be bought together for $259, or you can buy them separately. But if at the end of this video, you feel like you only benefit from one of these, then you can buy them individually. And finally, with it being artificial intelligence, it pretty much does most of the work for you and you can get high quality results with literally just a couple of clicks. But I would recommend playing with some of the settings a little bit because, you, you don't want the machines to really take over, do you? So let's move on to the examples and here we are in Lightroom. I've loaded up three photos which have already been edited but haven't been exported from Lightroom. So in the first photo, we're not doing really any noise reduction as such. I've just increased the color just because I wanna keep that nice blue color in the background, but we are doing some sharpening in Lightroom itself. This photo was only shot at 2500 ISO, but the reason it's very noisy is because that is the actual size of the image. And this was shot on an A7S 3 So this is cropped in and it's probably only around about four megapixels, not the full 12. So you can see the problem. So these three pieces of software can be used as a standalone application or they can be used as a plugin inside Lightroom and that's how we're gonna be using it. So for the first photo, we're gonna right click and go to edit in and then we're gonna choose denoise first. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's no information as to what order you are meant to do these in, but in my eyes, I would use denoise first and then sharpen because sharpening actually adds noise. So if you was to sharpen something and then denoise it, you are in theory going back to square one. And finally, when you have the full image that's when I would use gigapixel to blow the image up to whatever size I actually wanted. So once the software is loaded up you can view it in various different formats which is all available at the top here. So single view, you've got split view and then side by side and the final one will allow you to see all the different kinds of AI models which Topaz Labs offer. As I've already said this is artificial intelligence so I normally just allow this to do whatever it thinks is right and look at the results and if I'm not happy with it that's when I start altering it. But instantly with this photo you can see the difference because this is the original and as I slide this over you can see the noise just be sucked straight out of the actual image. The software has already chosen the severe noise model, but let's just go to clear just to see what it'll look like. And sure it's way it reduces the noise, but there is still a little bit in the background. So for me personally, I think the software did a great job. I'm gonna go back to severe noise, let that update, and then just hit apply, and that will drag it straight back into Lightroom ready for you to continue editing. Now the second image is a great example of this software because this was shot at 8,000 ISO and as you can see, it is incredibly, incredibly grainy. So we're gonna right click, go straight into denoise and see what it gives us. And straight away as I drag this over, you can see the noise just disappearing, but it doesn't leave any artifacts whatsoever. And the feathers actually on the bird do get slightly sharper just with this single plugin. As before, I'm just gonna hit apply and that will just send it straight back over to Lightroom. In the third photo, there wasn't that much obvious noise, mainly because of the texture which was in the photo, obviously with it being a deer and the bokeh in the background. But I decided to put it through the software anyway and the results were absolutely fine. Denoise is just a very simple and easy way to put your photos through and achieve nice clean results on the other side. One thing to be aware of is when your photo comes back into Lightroom, down in the film roll, you will have two different photos. One of the photo which you had edited and one of the new version. And the new version doesn't have any Lightroom alterations on it. So when we go into the next plugin, which will be sharpened, make sure you take the correct one over. So when you open the sharpen plugin, you have all of these models down the right hand side. Now you can click on this little button up here and that will automatically choose the one which the AI system thinks that it requires and once it's loaded you can drag this bar across to see the before and after 
And as you can see, them water droplets and the eye and all the detail definitely comes out. But I personally think that's a little bit too much. So we're gonna go back to the standard model, which is motion blur normal. And I feel like that is a much better look. It isn't too sharp, it isn't too noisy in certain areas, if you know what I mean. That's obviously what sharpening is. And just like before, you press apply and that will send it back into Lightroom again, but as a third photo. For the next two photos, I've used the exact same AI model and these are the before and afters of each single one. And something to bear in mind is if you've got a moving subject inside the frame, you can use the auto mask function inside the sharpen module and that will allow you to only sharpen certain parts of the actual image. And before you ask, I know exactly what you're gonna say. And that is, Danny, these photos are already really sharp straight out of camera. What about something which is really blurry? Well, I've got that covered. Here's a photo of my own car doing a rolling shot. And as you can see, it is incredibly blurry. I'm well out of practice from doing that. But this is the same photo put through the sharpen module and you can tell the difference like night and day. So now let's try the first photo that we edited, which is the one of the duck where it's like three megapixels. And let's try putting it through gigapixel and see what it looks like when it's been enlarged by 600%. So in the gigapixel module, I've made it six times, which is 600%, which is the highest it recommends that you can go to. But if you wish, you can go further. And I've zoomed into 200% just below the neck of the duck. And we're gonna just swipe across with the before and after line and see what it looks like. So this is before, and as I go across, you can instantly see everything just sharpen up and all the pixels nicely go into where they should be. And when you move to a more detailed area, such as the bill of the duck, you wanna see all the detail. And as I swipe this across, you can see all the detail come back. And remember, this is a 12 megapixel photo, which has been cropped in loads. So as before, once you're happy with the results, you hit apply and that will go to a fourth version of the photo in the film roll. And this is both the before and after photos of Gigapixel of that exact photo zoomed in on your screen for you right now. And let me just show you exactly where we started with this single photo. And then once again, where we've ended up. It's pretty amazing, isn't it, what you can do with software these days. So let's move on to the pros and cons that I've seen whilst using Topaz Labs in my photography. You've seen yourself how well it works and it is fantastic. It's a great, great tool to have on your computer. It really helps clean up the detail and the bokeh in the background and enables you to just give that final, you know, little bit of polish to your photos to give them that, you know, that, that tastiness. And as you've seen, you can use it as a plugin inside Lightroom. I do believe you can use it inside Photoshop as well. But if you don't want to use it with either of them programs, you can use it as a standalone application inside your computer. And it is available for both Mac and Windows. Unfortunately, with the bad bits, you can batch process all of your photos all at once. You can highlight them all, right click, send them somewhere, and let AI just do everything for you, apply it and bring it straight back into Lightroom. But you're putting a lot of trust in the software and it can actually make the software bog down a little bit because it's having to do so much all at once. It has been said that you can get artifacts within your photos whilst you're using the software. So make sure you check your photos before bringing them back into Lightroom. It can be a lengthy process. So personally, I wouldn't use it for every single Single photo out there but you know for them photos where you just need something saving it's definitely good for that and unfortunately even though you've paid for the software topaz at the minute only allow you to have 12 months worth of free updates so if 13 months come by and a new update comes out you have to go and upgrade the software and pay for that upgrade so would I recommend it to any other photographer out there? Well, I've used it for the last month, especially on my wildlife photography and absolutely love the results. It makes me feel a lot more confident shooting in poor lighting conditions or shooting at a really, really small aperture just to make sure everything's in focus. And on them really long lenses, f6.3 is sometimes the widest aperture you could possibly get. They do offer a free trial of this software free of charge. But if you do decide to purchase the software but don't really like it, they do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if this video hasn't convinced you, go download the trial and try your own photos in it and see what you think. But if you're worried about the photos you're posting on social media and they're not getting the exposure that you really wanted out of the photos, and this goes for anything that you create, then I recommend that you check out this video right here. And that's all for me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Later.